We've all seen these cool AI avatars all over the internet. But as interesting as they are, they're still just images, stills. I wanted to try an AI avatar tool that creates a more dynamic, moving, talking version of myself. And I can tell you already, it turned out pretty good. Almost a bit scary. The tool I used to create my custom avatar is called Synthesia. They were so kind to sponsor this video, so thank you for that. Of course, I could have used one of the default avatars made already, but I thought it would be fun to try to create a custom avatar of myself. Español, un idioma muy hermoso y útil en muchas partes del mundo. The way it works is that you click your way into avatar creation, do as they say to prepare your shot, read a number of sentences, I move my hands a little bit as doing that makes me more engaging and wait a day or two. That's it. This is how I turned out the first time around. My name is Rude Reese. I'm a webcam avatar and the first attempt at that. Not perfect, so I'm rippity rappity ready for round two. Okay, so clearly this wasn't perfect, but still pretty wild how easy it was to create. There's a huge difference in quality between the studio avatars and the webcam avatars. But I was curious to try out how easy it could be to create my own custom avatar with a webcam. And no, it doesn't sound like me. My name is Rude Reese. But it could if I set up the integration with Descript's overdub feature. Pretty wild how close this voice from Descript is to the real me. Uh, I saw a YouTube video with Synthesia's CEO where he hinted to a future feature called voice cloning where they'll be able to clone my voice without any need of integrations. But you also spotted something else that was pretty bad, right? The black patches around my arms. My excuse is that I had no idea how to interpret this guide on how to position myself. So I ended up too close to the camera, I think. So I gave it another try. And this time I ditched the DIY tower of cardboard boxes and sat down instead. Didn't want to risk a two and a half thousand dollar MacBook on this, so I went with a safer setup. I did all the sentences again and waited for my avatar to process. And this version was so much better. Now we got the image right, but the lip sync isn't the best. A combo of version one and two would be ideal. Ha 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 ha. At first, it felt really weird to see yourself like this, to experience how easy it is to create these, to see the quality of AI avatars in 2023. This, in combination with chat GPT and what's happening with the Descript overdub stuff, really makes me feel a bit threatened professionally. My expertise lies in script writing, voiceover, and visualization. And now you can pretty much generate all that with chat GPT, overdub, and Synthesia. The experts on this would say I shouldn't worry too much. AI needs human creativity as input and human quality checks on the output. And yes, there are more engaging ways to visualize a voiceover than a talking avatar. But for context like corporate training, where scale, efficiency, cost and diversity is key, this kind of generated learning content is much smarter than traditional video production. Let's put it to the test. Do a quick face off. Me against my avatar. Who's better at languages? This is my best American accent. No, this is how American English sounds. But I speak all languages. Hola, amigo. Una cerveza, por favor. Español, un idioma muy hermoso y útil en muchas partes del mundo. Buongiorno, principessa. Arrivederci. Italiano. Una lingua canora con molti personaggi e fascino. Je t'aime, mi amore. Parler français? Probablement la langue la plus romantique du monde. Okay, Avatar wins this round. Let's compete in time to content. The challenge is to create three slides with a host on top. Welcome to this presentation about myself. 
I'm a 33-year-old Copenhagener with a love for animation. My job is to help educators turn their knowledge into video. Welcome to this presentation about myself. I'm a 33-year-old Copenhagener with a love for animation. My job is to help educators turn their knowledge into video. Okay, the avatar wins that one as well. Now it's two to zero, both on languages and efficiency. But I'm more interesting to watch. I'm more human and that still matters, right? Let's hope you care about this authentic me, otherwise I'll be out of a job real soon. Can you connect with this person? Is it real enough for you to care? Is a talking head effective at explaining complex topics? A key point to remember is that hypergeometric distributions are used when trials are being conducted, without replacement, and there are a known number of successes in a population of a known size. I'm an animation fan for this reason, its ability to simplify complex topics. But I guess there's no reason why animation and avatars couldn't be combined. A key point to remember is that hypergeometric distributions are used when trials are being conducted without replacement, and there are a known number of successes in a population of a known size. Or maybe we'll see a combination of AI and human content. Generated content is probably going to be used where scale, efficiency, and cost beats factors like authenticity and that human feel. But still, remember that the output only becomes as good as your input. So make sure you have a nice blank wall, that your shot is lit well, and that you have a decent webcam to record the whole thing with. If you got a thousand bucks, high ambitions, and the need for a more premium quality avatar, you can't get that with the other type of avatar creation. This requires a studio with a huge green screen, professional cameras, and perfect lighting. I'll see if I can get one made in the future. Speaking of the future, look at this futuristic studio setup that Synthesia is creating in their London office. It's a volumetric 3D studio and it lights and shoots a person from all angles. So when Synthesia gets this to work, they'll be able to, or you'll be able to walk your avatar around the scene and make it do actions that are much more similar to what an actor would be able to do. The first step in this direction of making the avatars more interesting to look at is micro gestures where you can make your avatar not wink and shake its head, but it still becomes a little dull after a while, right? So I'm looking forward to more features around bringing these avatars more to life. If you want to give Synthesia a try, play around with AI avatars and make your own, I recommend signing up for a personal account. And when you've done that, I also recommend that you watch my in-depth tutorial walkthrough of the key features and functionalities of Synthesia Studio. Thanks to Synthesia for sponsoring this video. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this technology with me, and I hope to see you in the next video.